Good evening, everyone. This is Angie Stewart from Miami Inner Light. Here again, live in Kardec Radio, in the Facebook of Kardec Radio. This is very exciting because of this modern times nowadays, we can learn in so many different ways. And Kardec Radio also, if you know anyone who does not have Facebook to follow us, in this live video, you can suggest the person to go to kardecradio.com. In the web page, there are so many beautiful studies from many different books. There are lectures, there are books for children, teenagers, there is everything to everyone. But if this person don't want to go to a website, for example, the person can download the app, Kardec Radio app on the phone and also can follow all the studies, including ours, Miami Inner Light, in this beautiful study of the book, Thought and Life, and also the Gospel According to Spiritism. So we are starting right now, and as every single week we have been doing it, we like to take a few seconds to relax, to calm down with our very busy days, agitated days, so we can relax and we can do our initial prayer as we always do. Whatever we are studying, it's always important to start with a soothing message from our hearts. And as I like to remind everyone, if you want, please put some water next to you because in Spiritism we believe the water can be our medication fluidified by the enlightened spirits. And you know, what is, what is bad from it? If nothing happens, it's already water. And it, because we believe it's a special water for ourselves. So let's just calm down a little bit. And before I greet the friends who are already here, we are gonna do a prayer, okay? Dear God, our mother and father, thank you so much for the beautiful blessing of being here again tonight to study these two beautiful books to enlighten our thoughts and make our lives happier. Please help us to connect with the enlightened spirits, our guardian angels, to guide us, inspire us, and open up our ideas maybe to something that we haven't thought before. Please stay with us. Thank you so much. So be it. Very good. Very good. Let's go again. So let me see who is already here. The punctual friends. Let's see the punctual friends. My dear Carla Marquez, Teresa Capatano. Wow, nice last name. Capatano. Tapano, La Souza, Rafael Medeiros, Daniela Stefanelli, Marilda Veiga, Sol Souza, Teresa Castro, hello, very, very good to have all of you here, this is awesome, and tonight we are studying thought and life, we have been studying for quite some time, Tonight will be lesson 12, the family. So if you do not have the book, please click in the link where the video is passing right now. And you can see the pages of the study tonight in the Miami Inner Light page. So you can follow. It's better if you can follow reading. But if you can go there, don't worry. I will read. I will do my best to read slowly so you can understand. And when we finish reading, we will start making comments. And I would love to see your comments, to see your questions, and we can think together and make it happen. So let's go. The family. Just a reminder, the last time we were here, we studied the Credo. So this is beautiful book. It's a beautiful book by the spirit of Emmanuel. 
through the mediumship of card of uh, Chico Savior. So if you can purchase the book, it is a blessing. If you can't, you can check all our other videos. They are in Miami Inner Light, and we studied all the chapters. So let's go the family number 12. Family relationships can be considered an important basis of our mental reflexes. Such reflexes can be pleasant or unpleasant according to what the past brings back to us. We do not, of course, include here spirits from elevated levels that pioneer evolution. When brought to dwell in a commonplace environment, they quickly overcome it by creating a mental climate of their own. They then, pro they then proceed with the task of renewal, what they come to accomplish. Instead, we refer here to the more common and ordinary situations of mankind. Everyone is temporarily adjusted to a range of ability that is within their own capability to develop. In other words, each one can only gradually read beyond the mental reflexes set for themselves. A primitive person do not suddenly leave the environment of their hut. They are reborn there many times. This also happens to a fairly civilized person who will have to dwell a long time in the same social plan. Here, they assimilate their experiences they need until their progress warrants proceedings to different achievements. The spirit reincarnate in the same sphere of their family relationships and meets again the links they had woven for themselves according to the thread of their thoughts and inclinations. What is referred to as psychological hereditary. Therefore, in a way, due to the natural gathering of spirits of the same inclinations and activities. Sometimes a great artist or prominent hero may be born into an environment that is unlikely their predominant attributes. The qualities of a genius have been patiently developed through the ages. They come to stamp the mental reflexes of their individuality for a creative and very important task. Usually, however, it is the home environment that brings together a group that reflexes one another. A family of musicians will more easily gather friends of the same divine art. Often, spirits who reincarnate as children of that family are the same companions who stimulated its musical vocations when still in the spirit world. They continue to reflect each other in their activities throughout many centuries. This also applies to sculptors and poets, politicians, physicians, businessmen, and farmers. They often have ties of affection and repeatedly share the same family genes. Thus, by working together through the law of rebirth, they maintain the evolutionary acquisitions through which they express themselves in space and time. Likewise, and by the same principle of attunement and attraction, alcoholics and kleptomaniacs, as well as delinquents and the morally sick, are born to those with whom they have a spiritual affinity. They share their mutual deficiencies 
and painful trials. Many whose minds are unbalanced become drawn to the genetic field of those whose company attracts them. This affinity is caused either by feelings of lower nature or by guilty deeds for which they are indebted before the law. Moral degeneration in families, therefore, is the result of collective debts that place us within a sickly genetic environment. It is a situation we deserve in our responsibilities with life and the world. Thus, we are compelled to endure the painful return of the toxic mental reflexes we have produced. Our relatives become the agents of this process and they will return such toxins to us in the form of affliction and pain. Therefore, in our family group, we have both the links of happiness we have been able to build through the love we expressed and the feathers of constraint and animosity. These chains come from the disturbing vices we fashioned in our destiny's memory and which we need to undo. This being a task that involves work and self-sacrifice, as well patience and humility. These are new resources for the production of spiritualized mental reflexes that are capable of erasing the effects of a previous troubled and unfortunate conduct. Amazing. <laughs> Emmanuel is amazing. Well, family, family is, is everything. Family is the base. Family is what built us up for better. But as we could see, there are no coincidences. There are no coincidences that we are born in a specific family. There are many different types of families. And as uh, Joana de Angelis told uh, Divaldo, you are born in the family that you need, not the family that you want. You know, many times we, are, we want to be born a family. I remember when I was a child, like, I don't know, 11, almost a teenager, uh, my best friend had parents that were amazing. Well, I thought they were amazing. She used to complain so much, and I thought they were amazing. So I wished my parents were her parents. And I used to think, oh, I can't believe it. My parents are so difficult. If I had her parents, it would be so much better. That was my childish mind. I thought that would be good for me. But it's not like this that happens. Her parents, they were what she needed. And I believe she was like more mild than me. So her parents were more easygoing. <laughs> and because I was a little bit more difficult, my parents, they were tougher. And that's all, also what uh, we nowadays, we tell parents. I hear many times people say, oh, Angie, I had three kids. And um, I gave them the exactly same thing. I put them in the exactly same school. I did uh, everything the same, same, same way. And they are so difficult and so different. But uh, because we know each spirit is different, each spirit has a different background, has something different bringing to this life and something that he needs to have addressed in a different style. We cannot do it. We love them in the same way. I only have one child, so you might be thinking, ah, oh, you only have one child, what are you talking about? 
but uh, that's how the spirits tell us the children this little babies adorable that we receive they look innocent and they are so angelic but they are spirits with hundreds of reincarnations hundreds of past lives and we don't know what happened so we as parents as aunts as good friends we really have to guide them in different ways if this child is more mild you might not need to be so so strong if that child is more complicated you need to be stronger but you need through love demonstrate to both of them what is right and what is wrong it does not uh, mean that you're going to be so good to one and bad to another one. no way that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking that we have to be in a way that's different sometimes but uh, we have to help these kids to understand what is right and what is wrong and most of the times through our own examples we cannot tell a kid to do something if we are doing something different. So if we say this is the right thing, the kid has to see that we are doing the same thing. We are following what we are doing. Although what kind of uh, example you are, you are not a good example at all. You are not a good teacher. So let's try to be the good teacher. This is so important. So as we, we read, in the text we our family relationships they are connected as we 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 read in so many beautiful spiritist books we reincarnate most of the time as a group as a group of spirit it's not the angie reincarnating alone no i am reincarnating with a group of spirits so my parents my cousins my aunts my friends my friends yes yes we don't know who are our friends sometimes they are our friends in this life but in the past life maybe a sister maybe a mother maybe an ex-husband so that's why we reincarnate together in different positions so we can kind of adjust some feelings that were not well resolved some problems we had in the past and God is so good is so infinitely good that always gives us another chance it's not that we want to make mistakes no but unfortunately we are not developed yet to not make mistakes we will make mistakes but the important thing is to move on make amends and try not to repeat the same mistake because that's the only way we can evolve that's the only way we can better ourselves is making something good understanding that what we made maybe was wrong and we have to amend and do better all the time so let's see some of uh, the passages here well please if you if you want to make a comment if you want to ask a question please do so so we can make it more uh, exchangeable so we can uh, have more participation let me see who is here after i said uh, teresa so margaret carmel carla again hey vanessa very good yes we can listen at the app I also have the app. I also have a SoundCloud and I love Kardec Radio and SoundCloud. Rudy, hey Rudy, how are you? Thanks to Kardec Radio for Angela's presence this evening. Our family, yes, Rudy, we are family. Vanessa, woo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> Vanessa loves to sing. I'm a disaster. Well, Vanessa might have come to the to the family of musicians, Emmanuel mentioned here, I didn't, I'm sure I didn't come to the same family of musicians, I might have come to the family of dancers, because this is more natural for me. So let's see, let's see what was uh, written here that we should, we should uh, uh, mention. 
like right in the beginning, the first paragraph is, is important for us to, to reflect, you know. The family relationships can be considered an important basis of our mental reflexes. Remember, like a few classes ago, we said we are what we think. Remember? We said it like, a, I think, three classes ago. When we think positive things, when we think good things, we vibrate good. We vibrate love. The energy is positive. And the yes, you, you might be thinking, oh, I can't be positive all the time. I have my ups and downs, ups and downs. Yes, this is normal. It's normal to have ups and downs. But what we have to understand is that to continue down for a long time is not good. It will bring you to a depression. There are problems of all types, but we can always see the light at the end of the, the tunnel. And to the ones that uh, were here last week, we mentioned the Australian speaker, Nick Vujic. I can never say his last name, but uh, he is always my inspiration. He is an amazing man. He has no members, no arms, no legs, and he's just love. He's full of energy. He does anything you can imagine. He swims, he, he skydives, he he, he's amazing. And nowadays he has two or three kids. So he got married. He is happy and he brings so much happiness to everyone. So we can overcome our difficulties and become better to become, overcome our bad moments and come back to be happy and shine light. So Emmanuel says here, such reflexes can be pleasant or unpleasant according to what the past bring back to us. So do you remember the type of people that love to remember bad things? And one thing is to talk about something bad that happened and you don't have that feeling anymore. It happened. Yes, I broke my arm when I was 10 and, and, uh, and I write with the left hand. So it was almost impossible for me to write. But I don't think about that anymore. It's past. Other thing is like, yeah, I remember that friend of mine who pushed me and broke my arm. So it's different. It's different. We cannot keep bringing this past uh, images to our mind angry all the time. The negative things are lessons. We are always learning with lessons and pain. We learn with pain. If uh, we didn't feel pain, it would be super dangerous. There is a disease that I don't know the name, but the person can put the finger on fire. The finger is actually burning and melting down, but the person is not feeling anything. So the body is not giving the, the, um, the correct answer to the brain saying, hey, 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 wake up, you are burning. So the person is getting hurt. The same thing is our life, our daily life. If we never felt pain, we wouldn't understand what it is. So we need to understand when we hurt someone. And that's why it's important to, to talk. Usually when we are hurt, we get angry. And we don't talk, we scream. And when we scream, we are kind of overreacting. And when you do things like that, nothing good comes from it. Uh, yesterday, I was coming back from a spiritual center, and uh, I, was, I had a friend in the car, and suddenly another car, boom, cut in front of us. And, and I stopped the car, like, we almost had an accident. And the person didn't care, just run in front of me. And then... Um, the, the, had the red light, we kind of stopped next to each other. But uh, in purpose, I decided not to go really close to the window of the person because sometimes people make mistakes and they want to attack us. Like, it's my fault that he cut in front of me. And I told my friend that uh, in the past, I would have gone through the window, open, and start screaming, complaining, like a crazy person. And you know, what good is going to bring it to me? Nothing. 
nothing because even if I am right, nothing really good is going to come from an aggression. I received an aggression. If I go back and I give another aggression, what I'm doing, I'm not giving anything good. I'm just, you know, action and reaction in a bad way. So I don't want to do that. So I told my friend, I'm so happy I'm better. Nowadays, I understand that person didn't pay attention, but I did. So I stopped the car and I'm like a little bit better that I do not go there to start like a, a negative thing in a, in a fight or a bad conversation. So that's how we have, uh, that's how we have to do. That's how we have to, to proceed. So Emmanuel also is talking about uh, uh, the primitive person. So we're still in the, the page 49. So it sa he says, a primitive person does not suddenly leave the environment of their hut. So it's not that a person that is not evolved at all is going to reincarnate in an enlightened planet, for example. So we reincarnate in the planets we need and in the level of families we need. So that's exactly the same thing. A primitive person is evolving little by little, but is reincarnating with that family environment that it's necessary. It's almost like uh, if uh, we imagine if we were from the 1800s like a, a movie that I used to see when I was very young. I think it was Time Machine. I love Time Machine. And the funny thing is that Time Machine for me was always going back. I always wanted to go to medieval times. I never wanted to go to the future. <laughs> I don't know. But I imagine if a person from the 1800s went inside a Time Machine and reincarnated in 2000, like to, uh, 2020, a little bit further than, than us, this person would be lost, would be really like, what is that? Wouldn't understand anything of our technology because it was sudden, you know, it's not through reincarnation. It was like sudden. If you really could think this could happen, a person that just takes a machine and appears there the next day. It's not a person that discarnates in the 1800s and is in the spiritual realm studying to come back. I'm really talking like hypothetical, okay? Like movie stuff, like, like um, this movie that I used to say. So when in the Time Machine movie, this person arrived in the future, they were desperate. They couldn't understand anything. They wanted to go back to their ways so they could little by little to understand. And, the, and the, we talk here about the exactly same thing. We want to evolve little by little. Nobody is going to be able to, to give a um, step bigger than uh, what he had done, bigger than what he had accomplished. We are able to evolve through our own acts, through our own efforts, so through our free will, so we need to face our difficulties. We need to study. We need to improve. Sometimes it's painful because uh, we were no angels in the past. Divaldo Franco, this spiritist speaker from Brazil, he always say that uh, if you are not happy now, don't try to go to the past. Don't try to, to you know, to do some kind of, um, what, what's the name that the, uh, Forgot now that you can be hypnotized and remember your past lives thinking you were a princess or you were like something important and something really, some, someone really good and special because most of the time, no. He always says that we are the better version of ourselves. We are the collection of everything we did, everything good, are bad that we did and we are here right now in this moment with this collection of uh, all the pros and cons and uh, through this life we are going to be able to better ourselves that's why it's so important 
to have like a, 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 a good family basis that could help us help us to be able to understand what is wrong, what is right. You have a mom, you have a dad. If you don't have mom and dad, you have some father or mother figure, grandmother many times, or you have aunts, or you have someone that uh, when you think about your childhood, you said that person was special for me, that person guided me, that person helped me. But we also understand there are sometimes, depending on what we did, that we are born in a family environment that we do not have a father or mother figure. Maybe we are born orphans. We don't know why. God knows why. We can just imagine. We can just put hypothesis. But uh, we might have been born in a loving family in a past life, and we really didn't care about our parents. Or maybe when our parents got older, we didn't help them. They provide us food and help and shelter. And when they got older, we might have just put them away. Or what, what, we don't know what could have done. Maybe, but uh, it might have been something not very good. So in this life, we would be born without parents. So we would value how important, how good would it be to have parents, even if the parents might not be the ones we wanted. Because as I mentioned before, we are not born the family that we dreamed of, but in the family that we need of, in the family that will adjust our family values, what we really need. So that, that's the type of family that uh, we are born, that we need. And um, what else can we talk here? I talk so much. <laughs> you guys are so quiet. Where, where are you? Teresa, where are your questions? <laughs> oh, what did you say here? Corporeal versus a spiritual family. Gospel chapter 14, item 8. Yes, perfect. Very good. We have a corporeal family and we have a spiritual family. And, you know, our spiritual family is big. It doesn't mean that our, all our spiritual family reincarnates together. The spiritual family is a big group. I'm talking about the, the imagine the, the spiritual family really that will become a physical family. It's big. One portion of this will reincarnate together. The other portion will come in different times. But we also can talk about the spiritual family, the people that are not from our family in this life, and we identify ourselves so well, like friends. Some, sometimes you have friends that you're like, my God, this is like my family. And a lot of people say, oh, I don't have a good relationship with my sister. I don't know, my brother. But I have a friend that uh, he is like my brother. And it's true. It's true. He is your friend in this incarnation. But maybe in the past incarnation, he was your father. So this, if, if there is love, there will be connection. There will be good feelings. There will be that uh, desire to be closer, that uh, things that you're like, oh, I really would like to talk to this person. We share many values in common. We have things that are really good. And sometimes with our blood family, we don't have that. But uh, we understood that uh, we are connected by blood ties because we need to fix up certain things we might have done wrong or because we really enjoy the time together and we want to come back together again as a mother and daughter or as a, or as a daughter and father. We want to go back together to continue improving our relationships, knowing what each one of us needs. So when we discarnate and we go to the spiritual plan, there are a group of people who help us to plan our return, to 
to plan a reincarnation. It's nothing like it happened like this. If you read the book Nosso La, Astral City, there is a, a, a important department there that André Luiz Spirit visits to understand the department of reincarnation. It's very deep. It's very detailed. They plan everything. They plan everything in details. Not the little tiny things we are going to be doing here. No, 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 it's not that. They plan who will be our family members. What kinds of trials I might be exposed. What type of body I will need. And there is a, a, a passage there that uh, a man, is, he's a, he actually was a spiritist worker, and he will be reincarnating. I think it's Jacinto his name. I'm not sure, but I think it's Jacinto. And uh, his body is perfect. And he asks to have a problem in his leg because in the past life, he had problems with vanity. He probably was like, very handsome and he had problems so he asked to have problems in his leg so he will not be so perfect his body will be will not be so beautiful so he will be able to work on it without the danger of failing again so if you hadn't the opportunity to read this book please read it or you can also see the the video and uh, <clears throat> So, Andrea Luis talks a little bit about the psychology, psychological hereditary. So, we are always evolving. We are always bettering ourselves. Every single time we come through a reincarnation, we progress. Of course, some spirits progress much more than others. Other spirits progress just a tiny little bit. And we don't want to be that. We want to progress the most we can. We want to really try hard to be better, to better ourselves, even if it is difficult. But we want to progress. Uh, Alexandra is meditating. Why? What's your doubt? <laughs> we are always progressing. You might be thinking, well, but what about the people who commit horrible things? Well. We don't know what kind of other horrible things that person did in the past. You know, we just know that the law of progress is perfect. And uh, two things could happen. Or we committed crimes that were even worse in the past. Or we were never exposed to that type of a fault, to that type of issue. So in that type of issue, we did not progress because we had never been exposed to that. So that was our first time. So in our poor analysis on earth, you would say, oh, this is digress. This spirit is going back. No, we are never going back. Or the spirit was never exposed to that type of problem and was the first time and was not good. Or in the past, it was even worse. And now he committed again so he was just a little bit better he didn't learn much and there are spirits that are kind of stationary you know they don't really go much higher they kind of uh, it's almost where you say you had a reincarnation that you didn't do much you could have done so much more so when you discarnate you wake up in the other side you see your quick video of everything good and bad you did, and you kind of feel ashamed. You also remember everything you promised that you would do. Oh, I will be more charitable. I will be nicer. I will be this, I'll be that. And then you see all kinds of things that you haven't done or you did wrongly, and you feel really bad. And most of us ask, please, please, please help me to go back immediately. So I will do good this time. But we know it's not like this that happens. You know, it's almost life and reincarnation is a new school. So if you didn't do very well in math, now you will have to do summer school to understand the mistakes and to be able to 
come back and do the test again. So you will be tested again to see if you learned. And life is like this. We will be tested again. The, the reincarnations are new opportunities to do good. And we have to study to better ourselves when we come back. So I believe we mentioned everything that uh, our families are attuned by love or by our issues from the past. So that's how we are united. And as God is so good, we are usually, we are never united in a family that everyone has huge issues. We have uh, uh, different levels. So we have some people that we have issues and we have some people that we really love in our family. And that's how, how we do. If you have very difficult problems with your father, you might have a loving relationship with your mother. So it balances. And that's how we are able to start learning the process of forgiveness, understanding, love, because family ties can be through love or through expiation, through pain. God is just. So don't think that, oh, I, I'm so unlucky. I was born in such a terrible family because that's exactly how we said in the beginning of the video. There are no coincidences. We are in the family that we need. And if you have a difficult situation, you have a really horrible problem with your mother, father, sister, brother, aunt, grandmother, whoever, whomever, try to address it. Try to approach this person. Try to be more positive. Try to think if you were that person, what would you have done? To rem remember whatever situation you went through and that brought you apart. And, you know, try to ask for forgiveness. Try to say, let's try again. Because the worst thing is to pass a lifetime hating someone or ignoring someone. Because, you know, deep inside, in your subconscious, this is hurting you. It's painful. And you think about that person like, Ugh. So try to make amends, even if you say, oh, it's never going to happen because this person hates me. But try to, to do the first step, go to the person, say, I'm so sorry, I didn't want to do that, or I, I was not thinking, whatever. And let's see if we can start again. If the person says, no, I don't, I don't, it's like, okay. So you say, whenever you feel okay to this, I would do be here, I will be here to we start again. And pray, pray. We always say that a prayer is a magical medication because we can see the power of prayer, but when we pray, we elevate our thoughts, we vibrate love, and uh, whomever we are praying to will hear our prayer, will feel the vibrations of love. And maybe through, during our sleep, we will be able to meet so that meet with that person that we have a problem and uh, you know maybe amends will happen in a, in this situation so i went over a lot this uh, book because family is so so super interesting but we have to go to the gospel according to spiritism in the introduction part that's very important and very few people study. And tonight we are going to be reading page 33. It's historical facts number three. And uh, we finished last week talking about the tax collectors. And now we are going to talk about the Pharisees. So let me read the Pharisees. From the Hebrew parash, meaning division, separation, tradition formed an important part of the Jewish theology. It consisted in the compilation of the success, successive interpretations given to the meaning of the scriptures and which became articles of dogmas. Amongst the scholars, Tradition was the object of unending arguments, 
most frequently concerning simple issues, as the words or form, similar to theological disputes and subtitles of scholasticism during the Middle Ages. Different sects resulted from all this, with each claiming to have a monopoly of the truth, and as almost always happens, Cordially, cordially detesting one another. Amongst the sects, the most influential was that of the Pharisees, whose, whose head was Hillel, a Jewish scholar born in Babylonia and the founder of a famous school where it was taught that faith aroused only from scriptures. The Pharisees' origin dated back to 180 to 200 before Christ or before the Common Era. The Pharisees were persecuted at various times, notably under Hyrcanus, a high priest and king of the Jews, Aristobulus, and Alexander, king of Syria. However, after Alexander restored their honors and their assets, they re reacquired their power, which they retained until the downfall of Jerusalem in 70 after the death of Christ, at which, at which time their name disappeared as a result of the diaspora. Diaspora was when the Romans sent the, Jew, the Jewish people away. They wouldn't be able to stay there anymore. They were spread out in many different countries. The Pharisees took an active part in religious controversies. Servile observers of outward worship, practices of ceremonies, uh, sorry, practice and ceremonies, ardent zealots, for the proselytism and enemies of anybody with new ideas. They feigned great script strictness and princip of principles. I'm sorry, that, let me read the sentence again. It's already complicated and I can't mess up the, the sentence. So let's go back here. So, servile observers of outward worship practice and ceremonies, ardent zealots of proselytism and enemies of anybody with new ideas. They feign great strictness of principles. However, behind the appearances of meticulous devotion, they did dissolute habits. They hid. They hid dissolute habits. Much pride, and above all, an excessive passion for control. Religion for them was more of a means to rise to the ranks than an object of authentic faith. That's hard. Huh? They possessed only the appearances and ostentation of virtue. Nevertheless, they exerted a great influence on the people, in whose eyes they were regarded as holy. That is why they were so powerful in Jerusalem. They believed, or at least professed, to believe in providence, the immortality of the soul, eternal punishment, and the resurrection of the dead. You can see chapter 4, number 4. Jesus, who above all else values simplicity and the qualities of the heart, who preferred in the law the spirit which gives life to the latter which kills, strove throughout his mission to unmask their hypocrisy and as a result made them his fierce enemies. This is the reason why they allied themselves with the chief priests in order to incite the people against him and put him to death. Wow, 
So this is important for us to understand. It's important for us to have an idea because as I, I mentioned last week, many times through the through the gospel or through movies that talk about the Jesus life or Jesus time we hear about it and we don't we don't understand so last week we were talking about Samaritans Nazarites publicans and tax collectors so if you can if you can read the book, you will see all the, the little paragraphs and you have a better understanding. And today we were talking about the Pharisees. So the Pharisees, they were this group of people that the, Jesus always was calling hypocrites. Hypocrites. Because they really value the external. It's almost like uh, these people that value what is beautiful by the outside but uh, they don't care about what is inside and uh, Jesus was very simple very humble he really did not care about uh, uh, all the, the the times of the types of uh, rites and the types of uh, uh, how can I say ceremonies they thought were important and the, the things that had to be happening to be good jesus thought about whatever is from the spirit is good from his heart he saw beauty in everyone even in the people who had the uh, problems even in the pharisees but as a good mother if you have a tough child you need to make this child to see the consequences of the bad acts so you have to be strong you have to be loving but you have to be strong. So Jesus many times told them, you hypocrite. You think more about the, the external than what is, what is really important, that's the internal. And if we bring to our, our lives nowadays, you know, people think so much about the external beauty and, and the do all kinds of things to be 100 years old and have the skin like all oh, beautiful, or they, 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 they buy these unbelievable cars or, or they, they work like crazy to have things. And we were having this kind of conversation in another group today. Money is good. We never said money is bad. Money is good. What is bad is what we do with money. Are we slave of the money? Or are we using the money for some good cause? Because money brings good to the society. If you are a powerful person, you can build up uh, companies, you build up industries, and you can give work to hundreds of people. You can create things that will be improving the society life. And, and this is all good. But what is not good is for us to be slaves of that. Because we know that when we die, when we cross over, we discarnate, the only things we're going to take with us, not even our naked physical body, not even that, <laughs> we are going to just take our spiritual values, everything we were able to construct, to build here. Everything good that we were able to build, we will take with us. The, the people that we loved, the people that we helped, that we inspired, we will take this energy with us to help us to the next life. But uh, yes, we will also take the problems we created, the, the people we hurt, whatever negativity we were part of, because we need to to take both within us to be able to study, to reincarnate, to come back again, to better ourselves. And the Pharisees, they are exactly what the Jesus really didn't appreciate, really didn't like. So Jesus always said they think too much of the form. They think too much on how to do it. Um, you remember the time Jesus uh, brought 
a hunch woman, you know, the woman that had the, 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 the problem in her back, an older lady, and he cured her on, on a Saturday, and they were crazy because it was forbidden. You cannot do that. You can't. It's forbidden. And Jesus told them, you hypocrites, don't you give water and food to your animals today? Why can't I help her? Why can't I free her from this disease that is with her for so many years? And they were actually obsessors that were with her for such a long time. So this is what Jesus always talked about them. Oh, don't come here today to, to make cures. Today is forbidden, okay? The day is tomorrow. And it's not like that. We can do good any day. Don't you feed your child, your animal today? Why can't we do good today? So that's what he, he meant to say, that they were always having this type of problems. We have a few more minutes. Let's read the next one. The scribes. Scribes. The name at first given to the secretaries of the Judean kings and to certain superintendents of the Jewish army. So, pay attention. The secretaries of the Judean kings or certain superintendents of the Jewish army. So, imagine. If you are a secretary of a king, you have to help the king. You are very close to the king. And in the past, the kings, they were the ones who took decisions on the main things of the society. Even if you are having a problem with your wife, there were no judges. They brought you to the king and the king would make a decision. So hopefully there were many wise kings that could help us through, through this evolutionary process. And if you were a secretary of the king, you have to write a lot, you pay attention, and you kind of memorize what the king says. So memorize the laws. The same thing, the superintendents of the Jewish army, army, strict. So they were writing the rules. But later on, this designation was applied specifically to the scholars who taught the law of Moses and interpreted it for the people. They had a cause in common with the Pharisees, with whom they shared their principles and their antipathy towards the free thinkers. So they did not like free thinkers. They did not like people who didn't follow the rules as the rules were written. So they had problems with that and them. This is why Jesus included them in the same reproach. So the scribes were similar to the Pharisees because they also were extremely strict. And if we think nowadays, when you are too strict to, to many things, it can be a problem. Should always have a little bit level of a malle malleability. I'm not sure if this is a word in English. But uh, if we think in a bridge or if you think in a building, for example. I live in Miami. There are these huge buildings, 30, 50, 70 floors. And we know Miami, Florida, there are hurricanes and uh, the winds are extremely powerful. So the structures of bridges or buildings, they have to be kind of flexible to don't break. When something is too, too hard, it, it can break. If something is a little bit more malleable, it will move, but it's, gonna go, it's not going to break. So this should be more or less laws that are that this is why laws have also exceptions and when we try when we have a tendency to be extremely strict we can start going towards an orthodox you know orthodox you just think like this and anyone who thinks a little bit different 
is wrong. And that's more or less how we could describe the scribes and the Pharisees. They were like this, strong, strict. And when Jesus arrived with all that love, forgiveness, you don't need to do that. It's okay. I can do this today or tomorrow. This was a shock. They didn't want that. They were the ones who were setting up the rules, the rules, the laws of Moses. And in their mind, he was breaking the laws. And he was not breaking the law. He was following the law. But he was just giving an adjustment of love that is so necessary. And Teresa is talking about the George Washington Bridge. Yeah, huge. <laughs> I remember a bridge in um, in California, in San Francisco, when it had, uh, I'm not sure, a hurricane or earthquake, I think it was an earthquake, and uh, they filmed the bridge doing exactly like that, the cars, like, bumping, and the bridge was almost, like, hard to believe that uh, that, that bridge was standing after that. But um, when we are more flexible in life, in general, we are happier. We feel better. We don't get sick so quickly. Because when the problems come, we understand it's a problem. But uh, we understand it will pass. Maybe not now, as we always want. When a problem comes, we're like, oh, I want to get rid of this at this moment. But sometimes we can't. Sometimes we have to go through it. And sometimes that problem will be longer than what we wanted. But it's important for us to learn to digest this problem within us and say, yes, it's happening now, but it will shall pass. And with Jesus, everything passes. And I will have strength to overcome it. I will have inspiration to meet people that will be able to guide me. I will have inspiration to be connected to someone, to something, to a situation, to a book, to a meditation that will give me strength to overcome that too. Because as Chico Xavier, the Brazilian medium, very famous, very loving, who discarnated, he always used to say that everything shall pass. Everything. The good moments and the bad moments too. Because the good moments, they will pass. Yes. Uh, who knows? A baby was born. You got so excited. It's a blessing. But that super excitement will pass because it becomes normal. It's almost like people when they get married. Ah, yeah. You just got married. It's like so marvelous. But then that excitement passes. And you know, love is built up with the time. It's not just the excitement of a party, the excitement of a, a moment, but the love is built up with time. And so that excitement shall pass, but the love remains. And the same thing with the problems. The problem is happening that second, so painful, so difficult, but it shall pass. And the best way is really praying. When we pray, we connect with our guardian angels, we connect with good spirits, sometimes familiar spirits who love us, and uh, they listen to our thoughts, and they try to help. And if they can't help, they will search for someone that will be able to come and give us uh, inspiration. So let's always have faith, and let's not be like the Pharisees or like the scribes of the modern times. Let's be more like Jesus. Let's really be inspired by him and stay with him in our thoughts and also in our actions. So the week is almost ending, but let's try to practice. Let's try to practice everything we learn because only like this we will improve. If we hear so many beautiful lectures, so many inspired people uh, they say amazing things you cry it's so beautiful but uh, then you think oh they are doing it because they are evolved but uh, you are not doing your part what is what is the good on it 
No, we have to do our part. So let's hear and let's practice, even if it's just a little bit. So that's it. So now we are finalizing for today and the next week in the gospel, we will start in page 35 and we are going to start in synagogue to understand what is synagogue and what was done in the synagogue in the past. So now we just invite you guys to relax and we are going to do our final prayer and we are going to mentalize our water because this water will be our medication for this week to whatever we are having. If it's a physical problem or a spiritual problem, it will be our medication. So let's go. Dear God, good spirits that are here with us and are with all our friends in their homes, with the friends who are listening to us at this moment, thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here with us, helping us to understand the beautiful books, helping us to talk about it. And tonight when we are going to sleep, please help us to fully reflect in everything that was said tonight so we can start putting in practice in our daily lives. And thank you so much for this beautiful study and help us to continue it. Help us to come back in two weeks again to continue with the book Fought and Life and the Gospel According to Spiritism. Thank you so much and so be it. Very good, very good everyone. Thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure as it usually is and um, if you want to read, our next chapter is already in the website, Miami Inner Light. You can go there. You can access. The next one we are going to read is children. Yes, the little children. They are so important in our lives. They bring so much happiness. <laughs> Did you see my, my teenager? <laughs> and... Uh, through the children, we are happier. Even if we don't have kids, we Just see the children happier. and we get so excited. So thank you so much, guys, and I see you in two weeks. God bless you. Have a great night. Bye-bye, guys. Bye, Teresa, Carla, Adam, Adam, my dear. See you guys soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>